just a dry run. Um, I printed out the uh, the ends, and then I lap them. I'll show you a photo of how I did that on the lathe um, at low speed, so as not to melt or deform the uh, the plastic end cap here that was printed. Um, using a little bit of rouge and um, a ball, actually this ball that uh, has already been mounted, drilled, and, and uh, tapped uh, for a 632 stud. Um, this is not glued on to my carbon rod yet. I'll do that later, but I'm just trying to lay things out and um, you know check fit and things like that. I pr pretty much have my print dead on. This is uh, a nice friction fit. Um, the magnet slid in a little tight, but I was able to push it in with a wooden uh, uh, dowel. Um, so let's see how this how this works. I'll pop it on there. You can hear a nice crisp pop. It's dead smooth. I mean, I can really see why people love these magnetic arms. They uh, there is just no slop, very little friction to move the thing around, but yet quite a bit of force to pull it off. And um, I do actually have a spring scale that I can measure uh, the force. I'll do that later. Um, but I'm guessing this is in excess of a pound. Just from what I can feel here. I have the magnet um, about as close to the uh, um, the ball as you can get. Um, there's just a teeny, teeny bit of, uh, of web. Um, actually, here's a uh, an end, a piece that I uh, uh, cut in half just to kind of get a feel for the profile of the thing and see how accurate it, it was in, in the uh, thickness of that web there. And it's about a millimeter of it thick or so. Um, might want to reduce that a little bit just to get a the closer the ball is, the steel is to the magnet, the more force you have in the attraction. But uh, I'm actually pretty pleased with this, and uh, it took me a little bit of time to figure out how to mount the ball to uh, drill and tap it. Um, had to make some custom uh, collets and things like that for the operation, but uh, now that I have it, um, it looks pretty nice. I am using a 632 um, stud here. This is actually a cap screw just for testing, but I have some 632 threaded steel rod that I'll be using. Um, and the reason I went with 632 over the, uh, the three millimeter um, that folks are using for the cap screws that they're gluing on is uh, it's a lot larger diameter, um, which means less tap breakage. I tap a lot of 256 and 440 and two millimeter, two and a half and three millimeter uh, uh, threads. And uh, <laughs> the smaller they are, the more likely it is to tap, especially in these hardened types of uh, materials like this steel ball. So um, by going up to a 632, um, less likely to break the tap, I can tap faster. And I'm also drilling the, um, the tap hole a little bit oversize. Um, traditionally, you'd use a, a number 36 tap, I'm sorry, number 36 uh, gauge drill um, to drill the, uh, the hole to tap. I'm actually using a 31. Um, the smaller the size, the larger the diameter. And uh, because we really aren't talking about a lot of uh, force on the threads here. All the threads have to do is kind of hold the ball in position. A little drop of lact Loctite on there when I um, put the final stud in will be fine. And then I have these cool little, oh, where is it? These cool little um, aluminum standoffs. Let me go over to my parts bin. I've got a ton of them. You kind of see it here. Um, this one is an eighth of an inch long. This is actually for a 440. I'm going to order some for a six uh, size six hole in the middle. But basically, they'll fit right here underneath the ball and act as a little post uh, to stand it off of the effector or uh, um, the uh, carriage arms, uh, the mounts that I make for that. So kind of a nice little little detail um, when those go on. So it's actually coming out pretty nicely. I should be able to get these other. Um, well, I'm going to print two, uh, I'm sorry, 12 new um, ends. I've got all the carbon rods, I've got all the balls. Um, only kind of negative is is that to uh, drill and tap each ball <clears throat> because of the way uh, I want to make sure that they're perfectly aligned with the stud, I have to put it in my collet, drill it, and tap it, which means I have to do a lot of tool changes uh, for each ball. Uh, ideally, what I'd like to do would be able to drill them all and then tap them all afterwards. Um, and I think I'll be able to do that. Uh, that would save a lot of time switching tools back and forth. So um, I'll have to give that a shot. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, as you can see, it's looking pretty good.